North Omaha History Podcast made possible by our patrons, Jay Hanna, Wanda Lewis, Ian Schneider, Lori Schwartz, Christine Gerber, Jody Lavallo, Jim Collison, Abby Hightoff, and the Great Plains Black History Museum, open Thursday through Saturday from 1 to 5 at 24th and Grant. Please go to patreon.com slash Omaha and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We'll give you a free gift. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. Imagine it's December 2nd, 1863. You're standing in the cold with major dignitaries like A.J. Poppleton, Augustus Kuntz, Ed Creighton, John Reddick, and A.J. Hanscom. Everyone's there to break ground on the much-anticipated Union Pacific Railroad, which will provide the first transcontinental railroad in the United States. And you're in Carter Lake uh, at the south end of Locust. And it's in an area that doesn't exist anymore, Adam? So, Steve, this mucky area south of Locust that was part of Carter Lake, it eventually got dried up and moved out. And we don't exactly know where that landing spot was. But regardless, at that point in the 1860s, they said, hey, this is where the Union Pacific Railroad is going to start. And it was right there in the North Omaha Bottoms. The North Omaha Bottoms weren't a magic place. They weren't that special or pretty. And sometimes they actually got kind of gross because the area wasn't really well suited for development. If you can imagine, the end of Carter Lake at one point connected all the way to the Missouri River. Everything in between that spot, when the Great Flood happened in 1877, Everything in between the river and the lake was just mucky and muddy and yuck. So it sat below the riverbanks in some spots and was called the bottoms and, or, or the second bottoms. It was a mile or two wide and uh, there were little hills on it and little trees and little muck here and there. The Union Pacific Railroad shops used to look right out over the bottoms. And they were actually put where they were because of the location of that, that original location for the bridge. Eventually, they moved that location for the bridge down south of Dodge Street to where it is today uh, by the Union Pacific Railroad Station. That's also called the Durham Museum. But the railroads, can, they, they immediately saw that whole area of the North Omaha Bottoms as being useful to their operations because they could build on crappy land and get away with it because all that they were doing was maintaining their operations. So we had a rail yard put in by the Union Pacific uh, just north of their shops. Today, it's east of North 16th Street and north of Nicholas uh, down by 11th Street. The yards have been cut back a lot, but at one point, there were a thousand cars going in and out of the yards every day uh, for maintenance and for trackage movement, all kinds of different things. The Webster St- Street Station was built by uh, a big railroad company right there, not the Union Pacific, but what eventually became the Missouri Pacific. And the Webster St- Street Station had both passengers and a different freight um, station right there, as well as Union Pacific Freight Station was right there. Uh, so lots of different railroad infrastructure right in that area of the North Omaha Bottoms. There were also hotels and cafes as uh, light industry factories, warehouses, and all kinds of things that came into that little area uh, that was between today what we'd see as North 16th and North 5th Street from about Abbott Drive north to Locust Street. Uh, And if a person can visualize that area, you know that there are a lot of warehouses that are still down there. The city of Omaha wanted to developed the area more strategic though. And in 1917, they started laying down streets in that area. Uh, there was Grace Street and Clark Street, Seward and Nicholas. North 11th Street became the only throughway today, but originally North 5th, North 9th, and a variety of other streets used to cut all the way through North 13th especially. The bottoms were really debated about though, because it was hard to figure out which state owned them, Nebraska or Iowa. And Places, big companies didn't really want to build on the land until they were sure that they were going to own it. Well, ironically, uh, the residential developers stayed away from that area in general, except for low-income people. 
there were tents and shacks and a lot of other um, rough places built down in the North Omaha bottoms. The paupers were there, the poor and the destitute. It was so bad down there, Steve, that in 1906, the Omaha Bee ran an expose that was called Christmas Never Comes to the North Omaha Bottoms. Christmas Never Comes to the North Omaha Bottoms. They had pictures of hovels made of scrap lumber and canvas tent villages and all kinds of rough living conditions or destitute mothers looking disheveled and sad and dirty and children in ratty, ratted, tattered clothes, old people who stand around in pools of stagnant water with a railroad running right in front of their door. The police were called down to the bottoms all the time for the constant fighting, uh, according to the newspaper article. And the writer said that they were recording their findings without a lot of hyperbole. So they knew the risk of portraying it as being rough, but also believed that they were telling the truth. They said that the bottoms were poor, quote, poor in the fullest, most inclusive sense of the term. And in 1917, when not a lot of people had them in their homes, the writer said that uh, sometimes animals live with the people with, quote, dogs, chicken, geese, and children common to all. Because, you know, children, they were just another pet to have at that point. So all kinds of rough living that was happening down there. Uh, the kids from the North Omaha Bottoms went to three schools. They went to Lake, Sherman, and Cass schools. Uh, at those schools, visiting nurses would come, and they would bring clothing for the students. And this is the way that a lot of the kids who lived down in the bottoms got clothes. There were wars down in the bottoms that were reported on by the paper. A man named George Green fought with J.F. Martin for years, and it sounded like a land dispute, but it went on all the way until they died. There were fist fights, there was gunfire, there were even bombs that were launched at each other's houses. It was rough living down in the North Omaha bottoms, Steve. The, you know, the... Railroads uh, frequently tried to, quote, compel people to leave, either by using the sheriffs or their own bulls who went down and roughed up the people who were living there. They'd push over the shacks and do all kinds of heinous things to kick people out. And eventually, all of these houses were uh, destroyed or replaced by industrial sites or just cleared out by the railroads. And, uh, yeah, the, the bottoms dried up at one point. The UP put up a fence on either side of Gate, Grace Street in, at the turn of the century, and a couple other forces joined in the complaint. You know, it just wasn't made to last. But, you know, interestingly enough, it was way back in 90, 1893 when the most expensive cash-only sale of land in Omaha up to that point happened Be over land speculation in the North Omaha Bottoms. The Omaha Ferry Company, it was left over from 1854. Uh, they held title to that land. Um, and tried to squeeze as much money as they could out of the deal. There were all kinds of famous names involved in it, including Woolworth and Lowe and a couple others. And eventually, they made their wealth off of some of that land down there in the North Omaha Bottoms. That same year, more than a million dollars in land deals happened in the Bottoms. But it never developed. It never took off. Illinois Central and a variety of other or businesses tried to get in on it, but they couldn't make sense of it. So then. The other important thing to know is that when the floods hit, they hit the bottoms the worst. In 1881, a flood came along that demolished almost all the roads that the city had put down there, demolished all of the housing that was down there and all the shacks. And uh, by the 1920s, the city of Omaha became committed to clearing out the bottoms. Um, they, they literally bulldozed all kinds of different areas. And today, there are just a couple buildings left from earlier than 1920. Um, but there isn't a plaque. There isn't any place of significance. There isn't any memory about the North Omaha Bottoms. Instead, it's just seen as another scummy area that's north of Dodge and east of 72nd. And that's the history of the North Omaha Bottoms. The North Omaha History Podcast is available on your favorite podcatcher, including Stitcher, iTunes, and Podcast Republic, Google Play Music, and TuneIn. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.